את שלום, שלום רס תפרי הנה, רס ידינו תפרי נן. I am Wendem Yadin, otherwise known as Ras Ayadonis Tefari. And we're going to touch on time. It's a very, very important uh, consideration, time. And some of the reasonings that and lectures that we've been posting on time and important uh, facts and factors about time and this time that we're living in um, is very, very important. And so we're posting online at our website a document called uh, the Hebraic uh, Judaic Year, Rastafari Hebraic Judaic Year. This is 81-82. Uh, I met a, a Bejwa or Bejinet, the year of redemption for us as Rastafari, as once lost but now found beta is Arayel. But we need to learn and comprehend how important time and, and calendar is if you look at some of the ancient Mayans and other civilizations, you would notice that they have um, two or three calendars in in one particular calendar. In other words, their calendar has a couple of different considerations that many of us in this modern so-called world or this nouveau ordre seclorum, so forth and so on. It's not really new, but they still call it new. It's the old world, the Gentile world system have lost track of time. We're lost in time, and we lost track of time, and we're moving in an artificial time. So for us to once again root and ground ourselves in our own vine and fig tree and, our, and drink water from our own cistern, we need to understand some things concerning time, and this is one of the reasons why we're posting this particular post. And let's uh, share a little bit of this with you right here. All right. Okay. Here we go. All right. This is this is the document right here that we're seeking to post up there, and its name is um, the Rastafari our Hebraic Judaic Year 81 Ameta Bejwa or A B. Roughly from 9 12 2011 to 9 11 2012, our, our uh, cycle from the Simchat Torah, from the joy of the Torah, which kind of ends off the year and is connected with the Shemeni Atzeret or the Simentenya Ken, the eighth day, which is the, we could say, the eighth of the seventh, and therefore the cycle is complete our loony lunar solar cycle so this document that we're going to post up we meant to post up a little bit before but as you know the harvest is ready but the laborers are few so we pray that more um co-laborers will be sent into the vineyard and this connects with our torah portion readings and feedings as well as the holy days so if you go to our website we have a link to um, our holy days or our calendar, our holy calendar. And that gives a basic overview of the seven or so major holy days, or the holy days that are commanded according to Torah, as well as some of the other Jewish or Judaic um, holidays and when they are observed. So what we have right here, and we're seeking to post up at the website, is a way that ones can actually chart which days are significant according to God's calendar or the calendar in the heavens. And we can see right here, one column here is uh, the Ethiopian uh, Hebraic holy days or the seasons as well as the seasons here. And then here is the Western uh, date according to the Western date on the lunar reckoning, remembering... Um, the first chapter of Torah, which it says that the sun, the moon, and the stars are for signs and seasons, days and years, reckoning God's calendar, the Almighty's calendar, or the heavens, the heavens. And we're in a period right now where there's some interesting um, heavenly signs, and we're going to connect that with this particular reasoning as well. And so here's where we're at right now. Now, after the Simchat Torah, which was the 21st to 22nd of October, 2011. It's the first weekly Sabbath on or after the Sukkot is completed. And this is connected with the Simchat Torah. And the eighth day, 
the Shemeni Atzeret, which according to some Jewish and, and Hebrew calculations was the 19th of October, 2011. So we have both our um, immovable, you understand, according to the solar Ethiopic calendar, that we have some immovable holy days or remembrance, metasebiya times, and then we have our holy, our high holy, the Hebraic, which are movable. Which, which are actually the movable feasts. Even according to Ethiopians and the Ethiopic church, there are some um, movable feasts, and Passover or Fasica is one of them. So we're hoping that this can better help and enable ones to, um, to number, you know, to number their days and to recognize what's what, when's when, as well as additional information and teaching on why that is so. So, I want you to pay attention to the right here, which would be roughly the second to third day of the Hanukkah, the second or third day of the Festival of Lights, which is uh, December 22nd, December 22nd. Now, most Gentiles are talking about the Christ Mass or talking about uh, Santa Claus and, and, and the reindeers and other kind of Gentile misconceptions. But for us, we should recognize that this time is the Hanukkah time, which according to Torah connects with the feast or the festival of the dedication or the livication of the Mekdes or the holy place. So as we said, we're going to post this up at our website, and this is for this cycle from 2011 going through to 9-11 or Ethiopic New Year. Um, and the Rosh Hashanah time for 2012. So this shows, like, when are the particular holy days, feasts, and festivals from our Hebraic perspective, as we can see right here. This is touching on Passover. You understand when Passover is coming forward, roughly around uh, April 6th. You understand April 6th, April 7th coming up. Um, this coming year from the Western perspective um, and the days of Passover. And like we said, more teaching will explain um, both the major, we're going to deal with the major holy days or the seven holy days, and as we said, the calendar that we have posted at our website um, can at least brief ones on which are the seven holy days that occur in three seasons. Seven holy days and three seasons. Now, after the main part of it, this is a seven-page PDF document. After the main part is, is, is the basic Torah portion, reading and feedings, beginning from the Rosh Hashanah, where we can call that the new year, the Adis Ahmed, or the head of the year, beginning from Rosh Hashanah. But within the Hebraic Holy Days, this is the third and final season, the festival of trumpets, so forth and so on, as well as Yom Kippur and the Sukkot and the Shemeni Atzeret and then the Simchat Torah, which begins the cycle of reading and feedings from Torah, from the instruction, from Jalor, once again, over again. And remember, the real calculation is according to the heavens. Now, it's interesting signs that we are witnessing in the heavens in this particular season as well. Let's just scroll this back to the beginning. And there's some, some explanation that we basically put up there concerning that this is the yearly list of dates for the Rastafari Hebraic slash Judaic year, 81 AB. And that's calculated according to the Addis Ahmed and the coronation of the King of Kings, Kedemawi Hala Selassie, at 81 AB. Ameta Bejwa, the year of the Redeemer. Look to Africa, where a black man will be crowned king. In him you will find the Redeemer, our kinsman, our Hebraic kinsman, Redeemer. Now, from that particular period of time, because Israel will never lack a king from their parents, and from that time to the present time, and now the approximate date of Ethiopian New Year, 2011, which according to the solar is immovable and fixed at 9-11, except on leap years, it's 9-12, as we just witnessed. 
And the following New Year or the Rosh Hashanah, the Ras Hasana, 2012 A.D., 2012 A.D. And there's more, as you said, explanation here. We sure there be questions, and we hope to be able to um, answer those questions or at least seek an answer with the brothers and sisters who who request such. Now, why is time so important? You see, we're so used to living in this Gentile Western misconception of things that we rely on the Gentiles to tell us when to turn our clocks back or forward, and we don't really understand why, because we still are captivated. We're still in Babylon. Why the calculation of time is so very important. Now, here is Psalm Psalm 90, verse 12, where it says, um, The libel now the King James translation is so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom now those who know the Amarinya the Amharic know that well the first part of this is sort of correct Belib Tibabin and Dinamar that live in heart wisdom so that we learn wisdom by heart. Then here it says, Kenya Hin, your right hand, indeed, like this, Astau Ken, your right hand, like this, is revealed, is made known uh, to us. You understand? Is made in your right hand, the right hand of God, the right hand side. Remember, it said about the sheep and the goat. And Christ said, many will be saying, Lord, Lord, and he'll say, get away from me, you lawless one, or you Torah-less one. And what Christ said, that you don't know what you worship. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews or the Judaic way. And he spoke to others saying that you do err, not knowing the scriptures or the power of God, an additional time that the Moshiach, Yehoshua, spent in teaching his disciples and teaching them um, the books of Moses, the Torah, the Psalms of David, as well as in the Biyat or Naveen, the prophets. Now, notice something else in this verse right here. The next verse, it asks the question, Avitu, I father, his father, father of the house, Temeles, return. Isko no? How long? Sula baria wochehim temawaget, temawaget. Reminds me um, of a phrase, uh, was it, Negus Komotu, Komot, Wedet, Magetu, or, you know, it's like if the king dies, basically, where would you appeal for justice, was the saying. But use this root right here, Temwaget. It's a legal phrase, basically. But here's the interpretation King James says, Return, O Lord, how long? Let it repent thee concerning thy servants. Well, actually, here it says, O Father, his Father, I Father, Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, Father of the house, Temeles, return. How, uh, how long will it be? How long? Iska mechesno? Sila baria him and concerning your male servants, concerning your male slaves or servants, Temwaget. In other words, argue the legal case, argue the justice and the righteousness. And this is what His Imperial Majesty, Karamawi Hala Selassie, what he is and what he has been for us, especially in the so-called last days and times of the Gentile world system, but the new age for the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ. He has argued, you know, saying the case for Christ effectively. And this is why many of us love him and recognize his imperial majesty. And there's a very beautiful um, connection with that particular point, but it's this part that we want to focus on right here where it says, return, O Lord, how long? So notice this is asking about time. How long will it be? And here saying, teach us to number our days so we can do what? So we may apply our heart, according to the English and certain Masoretic versions of it, that we may apply our heart to wisdom. Here it says, so that your right hand, so that the right hand or the Yemen, the right hand of God, which symbolically is the Yeh or the Yemen or the Yod 
will be revealed the flame letter, which is Yah or Jah, in other words. That right hand in the Hebraic is Yemen or Yod, and Yod means hand. So therefore, the overstanding is that your right hand or that Jah or Yah, that you will reveal yourself to us. Because he will do this, and he is doing this according to his own time, where it says it will be in his own peculiar or particular time. One other verse before we get to the recent um, revelation about some of the signs in heaven. Um, this is this verse right here. There is Wode Faison Sewoch, or this is Ephesians right here, chapter 5, verse uh, 16. So the last part that we just had right there was 90 and 13 of the Psalms. And now let's just go to Wode Faison Sewoch, or Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16. Where it says, Kenochu, Kufuoch, and Nachuina, Zemenun, Waju. This is very, very interesting right here. And the Targum, or the interpretation, is redeeming the time because the days are evil. But let's get a little bit of a context. Let's see if we can get a little bit of a context of this, um, of this right here. Uh, let's go back to that. I think went to another chapter right there. Let's go back to uh, here. We go um, now. This verse right here. This is Ephesians chapter five, right? Ephesians chapter five. It's giving us very clear instruction. It says it says, um, "Be ye therefore followers of God, followers of Jah, as dear children. Walk in love, as Christos or Moshiach." also have loved us and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling, for a sweet-smelling savor, a sweet-smelling savor. Now, it says right here, verse 3, let's pull this up. It says, um, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh the Kedusan. Remember that word we've been touching on, the Georgis reasonings, Kedusan, the saints, or the holy ones, those who are set apart. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather the giving of thanks, but rather the giving of young eyes or thanks and praises, miskana, miskana. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, no Babylonian, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Now, this is significant because some would say, well, how come these people don't want to hear the truth of the king of kings concerning Haile Selassie? It tells you the answer is right here. It says that no whoremonger who's running after the Babylonian whore, no unclean person, nor greedy or gavalicious or covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christos and of God. So they don't have any inheritance. They don't get anything out of it. It's, it's not for them. That's why it says, let no man deceive you with vain words. All the vain words are talking, even right now, about the economy and the whole situation. This is prophecy time. For because of these things cometh the what? The wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. This is the key right here. The wrath of God, judgment is coming upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. This is why we separate ourselves, the, the, the kedisana. We separate ourselves. For ye were sometimes darkness. We were also ignorant. We were Babylonians. Many of us have done almost all, almost all the things that most people are still doing now, or lost ones are still caught up in. So we have to acknowledge that to the God of truth. We were sometimes darkness or ignorance. But now... Are ye light in the Lord? Are we illumination in Adonai, in Yah, Rastafari, in Jah, Rastafari? Walk, in other words, our uh, halakha or our walk or akahe conversation or behavior should be as children 
of light, children of the, the true illuminator of Kedamawi Haile Selassie. Verse 9, for the fruit of the Spirit in all goodness and righteousness and truth. It's really speaking Kabbalistically here when you understand the, the translation of these principles, goodness, righteousness, truth, providing or proving, you could, uh, proving what is what? Acceptable. What is acceptable to Yahweh, to Adonai? What is acceptable? Not guessing, but we, we should be able to prove. And have no fellowship. In other words, we're not on a brother-brother. We may, you know, have, have these people in society, in our family, but they're not really our spiritual brothers and sisters. They're not really our fellows. Like one... Um, one messianic group had said, that we saw on their website, they said, we will preach to you, but we cannot fellowship with you until you come into the true faith. Then you are our fellows. So what we can preach to ones or proclaim the truth to ones, but we are not really, let's not be deceived just because somebody is black, just because somebody is our color or, or on any of those outer things that they are necessarily Spiritually speaking, our kind. This is why it says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, but rather rebuke those things. Reprove them because those things are wrong, and perhaps the people don't know, but we bear witness that we record, reprove them. Reprove them. They don't say, no, please, if, much, but, buts, or baby, maybe. You understand? Prove them. You understand? For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. And we're hearing a lot of stuff about the secret society. Me and a brother the other day was reasoning about the so-called boule and some of that kind of stuff that goes on. And, you know, it's a shame to even have to talk about those things. But those things are being revealed in this time. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, by the illumination, the true illumination, not that fake so-called Illuminati that they talk about in the world. They're disilluminati. They know they're no real enlightenment. They're fake. They're backlighting, not the true lighting. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. All things that are reproved are revealed, are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. So the King of Kings, Arastafari, Revelation, makes manifest. So he is the illuminator. He is the truly illuminated one, not the so-called builders who have rejected the head cornerstone. But it goes on in verse 14. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christos, Moshiach, the Moshiach, shall give thee light, shall give thee illumination, shall give thee illumination. What does it say right here? That's verse what? That's verse 13. O hulu gin, be barahana siya galet yitaya, yemitayo hulu barahana winna. Wherefore, wherefore he saith, awake thou that sleepest. Awake those who are sleepers. You got our sleepers. You understand? And arise from the dead. In other words, separate from the dead ones. Arise from the dead. Silazi ante yemitetenya nika kamutanema tenesa Christosema yabaralahal yilal. And there's a beautiful word here concerning resurrection. In other words, arising from the dead. Arising from the dead. And there's a couple of levels that that is applicable both on the literal level, but also on the, on the mystical or the metaphysical level. Verse 15, we're coming to our main point right here, where it says, See, sight then that ye walk circumspectly, that you walk circumspectly, measure, you know, that measure your walk, not as fools, not as foolish, like, like worldly ones, but as wise, be wise as serpents harmless as doves. Verse 16, redeeming the time, here we are right here, because the days are evil. So these are the two areas we wanted to put it into context. Better context, here we have in Gadi, in the Tibbenyo Chinji, Tibbe Ba in the Lelacho Asaihon, 
እንዴት እንድትመላለሱ በጥንቃቄ ተጠብቁ በጥንቃቄ carefully ተጠብቁ keep it or protect it ቁጥራስራ ስድስት ተቀኞቹ ኩፍዎች ናቸው እና ዘመኑና ዋጁ now it says redeem the time now it's interesting there's a couple of words that are used for um redeeming you know saying for redeeming right but the context right here is to use the time wisely and recognize what time that it is according to God's time that's why verse 17 says wherefore be ye not unwise don't be foolish and doolish but understanding or overstand what the will of the Lord is like some people say oh nobody know what the Lord want nobody know what is but the bible says don't be don't be unwise you know saying but overstanding what the will of the gita is silazia gita fekada minindahana asatolu inji monyoch atuhunu monyoch atuhunu don't be monyoch don't be dedeboch don't be don't be foolish and be not drunken with wine you see that right here be not drunken with wine like nowadays every everybody's a, 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 a alcoholic you understand be not drunk with wine wherein is excess but be filled with the manifest that we're to be filled with the spirit this is also another segue and connection with the true it and the, and the true sacrament. It says, Manifest ye mula bachu inji be wint e jatisakaru ye mabakin no winna. This is wasteful. Ye mabakin no winna. This is waste, wasteful. I like would say rum, Rastafari say rum make you glum. You know, rum make you dumb. But here now, this is this is actually what we are to be doing in this time, in this in this zemin that we're in. It says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual, iritical songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to Jah Rastafari, to to the Lord, to the Gita, to Jesus Christos, giving thanks always for all things. To God, to the God and the Father, in the name, this is the proper protocol, we give thanks to our Holy Father, Kedus Abatachin, in the name of Getachin, Jesus Christos. You see it right there, right? Submitting yourselves one to another in the reverence, in the reverence, in the reverence of the Gita, in the Christos uh, Farhat. Yetegezachu hunu le yandadachu, but Christos of Farhata Yetegezachu hunu, submitting yourselves one to another in the reverence of God, in the reverence of God. It goes on now. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as to the Lord, as to Adonai. That means that your husbands should be submitted to Christos, the Mushiach. Otherwise, you are improperly yoked, and the same goes true for the, for, for the men then. For the husband is the ras of the wife, even as crystal. See, so this modifies, you know, a lot of male BS, you know. This modifies, even as Christ is the head of the Beta Christian, because we study and learn not as fools, but as wise, the relationship of Christos, the Moshiach, as the head of the church and he is and he is the savior you no know, he is the savior of the body he is the savior of the body the body of us as christiano therefore as the church is subject to the moshiach so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything and in everything in the context of everything that is upful and right in the adonai Brothers, stop going beyond the bounds. Don't go beyond what is written. Neither wives. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christos also loved the Beta Christian and gave himself, and gave himself for it or for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Notice this metaphysical connection. As ones will wash and clean themselves with water, 
Christos on the higher level of the baptism baptizes us in, in the word so we will know and, and, and recognize what the will of his father, our father, his God, our God is, that he might present it, present her, the, 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 the corporate body of the church of Rastafari to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. They say, happy wife, happy life, right? For no man ever hated his own flesh, unless he was like sick in the head, right? But nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the gear to the Adonai, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined to his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. But now notice what Hawaii Apollos is saying right here in Ephesians, in verse 32. This is a what? What kind of mystery is this? This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christos and the Beta Christian, not. He, he's saying, Yeh, Yeh, Mishtir, Talat, no. 